Hi guys, welcome to another session of the TIA portal. Today we will learn how to create a project in the TIA portal in detail. So let's get started. In that, when you open the project, just create new project, and you can give it any name, and just click create project. And that's it. And after that, you have to add a device called PLC or HMI. We can it's just okay to move to the portal view. Here we can double we have different menus like add new device, devices and networks. We will just for now just click on the add new device. and that's it we can add from plc the hmi or pc systems for now for this tutorial we will add we will add one plc there are various types of the plc according to our project we can add a whatever plc or the part number we need here and when we select a PLC, here we can see in the description all its specifications, its number of IOs, counters, or high speed counters, or analog IO, or other communication, which mod uh, interface it is using. And we can also first select the firmware version. This just click OK. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's we have added our PLC here. And if you expand our PLC, now you can see we have device configuration, diagnostics. We can add our programming blocks. We can see the PLC tags here. Okay. As we have already opened the PLC configuration or the device configuration. Here is the rack of the PLC. We can add our IO devices, IO cards, here analog output, communication boards. For now, I will add one digital input card here. Any random. And uh, let me add one more digital output card here. After that, it is good to add one analog input card also. I will go with the four analog inputs and uh, one analog output card. So that's it. Here you can see our voltage levels, our number of IOs number of channels for the analog input and output calls here there are other things which we will discuss today in detail let me bring it into the middle of the screen okay if i select this card here is uh, its details like its input address is starting from the 8 like it will go like 8.0, 8.1, 8.2 and all so on for the analog output cards here it it starts by from the 12, 12.0, 12.1 it will go like this and here are the input channel for the analog cards and these are the input these are starting from 128 to 135 so we can also change our address, Q address, output address in, we will make it 14, 
it is configurable and if I select my PLC here it is here it is showing that its I address is starting from 0 Q is also from 0 to 1 and here I have an analog channel also analog and we have high speed counters also here are the addresses of the high speed counters yeah of course it is with profinet interface we can see here here are other cards IU cards which we have just connect inserted in the rack hmm. so let me expand its menu of the PLC yeah that's it here we can see its profinet interface we can configure its name according to our project we can put like PLC1 yeah and after that you can see here this is our IP address of the PLC it is also configurable we can change it yeah we have IP route if we, we use IP router we have to put its IP address right now we don't have any so what next next thing I want to discuss is this digital IOS these are the scanner filters like right now it is 6.40 milliseconds so that's enough we can configure its analog channel from here okay we can make it strong by reading by increasing the cycles and this is the second channel we can and the other thing I want to discuss with you is this system and clock memory this is the system and the memory and we can enable this one these are the bits which will be now reserved for the PLC functions like you can see M1.0 is for the first scan it will be high in only first scan always true is M1.2 and 1.3 will be always false we can enable the clock bits also here are the sum of the you can see m1 0.0, .0 is alternating at 10 hertz or switching at 10 hertz there are different like m0.7 is switching at 0 0.5 hertz we can use this these tags in our program now we will go to the default tag table so as you can see these are the bits which we have just configured we can use them in our program according to our needs sometimes we need to generate some signals so to save our time we can use these bits directly Now we can see the device configuration. One thing I think I forgot to tell you. Yeah. Okay. If I go to the analog input channel zero, here we can select over analog like it is voltage signal or it is current signal See? right now it is current 0 to 20 milliamp or in the channel 2 we can also change channel 3 2 sorry yeah this we can keep it like 
plus minus 5 volt so it depends on our sensor or the transducer which we are going to connect at that particular channel here we go for the programming we have to go to the main object block so here is the network one we can for now we just make only one little example here we can drag a no contact here like m0. Five. So you can see this bit is now reserved for the PLC and uh, it is clocking at 1 hertz. So it will be, it will stay on for like 1 second and off again for the 1 second. We just connected one coil with directly to it. Here I will put uh, again another anode contact. And uh, we can also add one coil. Here I will put M0.2, which is clocking at 2.5 hertz. So, our basic example is ready. Now it's time to load in a PLC. So that's it. We will hit the download button and we can select the interface. We select PLC sim because I am using simulator trial interfaces. And yeah, it has detected the PLC at this particular address. So load and compiling configuration yeah just okay we will start all the modules and now we can go online yeah just keeping this aside and we will now go online to to monitor this ladder you can see this thing is clocking at 2.5 hertz okay and this thing also so this is the basic language this is the basic thing how we can create our project in the TA portal We can go on the online diagnostics here. You can see it is showing our online module which is connected right now. We can go to the diagnostic status. It will show our module. Everything is okay. This is our buffer, diagnostic buffer. If any error occurs in our PLC programming, it will show here right now there is no error nothing just normal startup messages this is our time cycle memory we can just see here how much our plc is loaded and how much the memory is remains this is our profinet interfaces and that's it And if you go to the default tags, and if we monitor these tags, then I think there will be interesting thing for you guys. Yeah, see this. These are all the tags are now alternating or switching or going from high to low and low to high at this specific times. Like some tags are. M0.0 is clocking at 10 hertz, 
and all these things now we will go offline that's it for now if you really like this video please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the notifications for the new videos